Hello guys. Bonjour. Uh, I am Mesfin, and today I would like to present uh, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Some calculations estimating the result uh, volume and surface area and study the, the hydrograph of the reservoir do some reservoir routing so that's it I just want to and to see what look like I mean the hydrograph the outflow hydrograph of the dam that it is a big dam it's a very recognized dam now in Africa I just want I just want to see to see the hydrograph the shape of the hydrograph and other details of the dam that's it and I want to I want to share this with with all who is interested in knowing about the dam. So in this discussion, uh, I am going to introduce the dam, very brief introduction. Then I will measure the area and the volume of the reservoir using ArcGIS. Very simple steps. Although it was laborious and very difficult before, now it is very easy as the invention, the technology is, is getting better and better and better and it's very easy to calculate the volume and the, the area of the surface area of the reserve. And then, uh, I mean, do the storage indication curve. I mean, the elevation versus the storage, the compact and the capacity of the storage. Also in GIS, the hydrology, you know, is in GIS. GIS is very important part of hydrology now. So it's easy to, to develop those, I mean, to process all those informations and, and use them for generating hydrographs like outflow hydrograph and there will be a result and the result will be discussed a little bit and uh, my opinion the conclusion and the discussion part will include just my opinion simply what um, the result of this analysis mean something like that so that's all Okay, to introduce the dam, the dam is the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. It's uh, very known. It's located in the Ben Shangul uh, uh, region of Ethiopia. And it's just located right there as the arrow that indicates on the map. That's Ben Shangul. It's 15 kilometers away from the border of Ethiopia. So below the, the dam there is another dam, it's a Sudanese dam, maybe maybe ninety-four kilometers away. Uh it is Rosary Dam. There is another another dam below the the Gard. So um the Gard is constructed on the Blue Nile, it's in the Blue Nile, Blue Nile River. In America it is Abai River. And uh, the construction began on April 2011. And still, it's not finished. Still, they are constructing. I don't know the delay, maybe because of the, I don't know, the dispute between the, uh, or maybe a civil war in it. I don't, I don't know, but it is not finished yet. <coughs> or I don't have any, I mean, uh, inform recent information, whether it is finished or not, that, that's it. But based on the information I have from the government website, I have some some salient, important parts of the the dam. So that's it. 
for example, the the <coughs> fetch links. I mean, the stretch uh, of the reservoir behind the dam is around 256 kilometers. It's, it's just a small country. <laughs> it's very very long, you know. And the dam height is 155 meters. Including that, the three walls, this is the level, top level, the crust level of the dam is 155 meters. And the dam width, the, the, the main dam, which is 1.8 kilometers. And the reservoir volume is huge, 74 billion cubic meters. It's very huge. Unimaginable. 74 billion meters cubic. Hallelujah. So the reservoir surface area is 1,874 kilometers square, they say, the surface area. So I'm going to calculate the surface area, this area, and see that for myself, if it is okay or not. I mean, just to exercise um, and see. And I will also calculate the reserve of volume. This is 74 billion cubic meters, and I will see uh, calculating by myself in RKJs. And the saddle dam length and height is, is 5.2 kilometers, they say, according to the website. But I have measured it, and it is almost 4.8. Uh, I don't know what they have included. Maybe they have, um, um, maybe this is the uh, information given earlier. And the uh, elevation, I mean, the total height of the saddle dam is 50 meters. The saddle dam is an emergency speedway, you can say. So the elevation level of the saddle dam is 642, which is simply two meters above the main dam speedway. That's 614 above uh, in sea level. They said also the discharge rate is about uh, discharge rate is about 1547. It means 1547 meters per second. Can be released to the maybe pen stock or maybe the wheel. Maybe. This seems for me is just only the pin stock, I think. We will see. I am going to calculate. So the watershed area of the dam is 172, they say. This is the watershed area. As per my calculation, I found that it is 175,000. 515 square kilometer, but um, it's just you know I just I traced it manually, so I uh, see there there is there, there was some error while while doing this thing. It was manual manually traced, so I just checked it, checked it again. I I just. Uh, Trust it, I mean, automatically with the help of the RPGIS, and I found out it is almost yes, 172. 172. A thousand. In five. Something like that. So, even if even if it is considered to be 175, it's not an error. I mean, it's just almost 2,000 square kilometer difference in this big. Uh, area of watershed is, it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't have any effect. But, it's right that it's 172,250. 172, 172,250 kilometers squared. Yes. Annual precipitation of the region is 1,240 up to 1,560, maybe sometimes it goes up to, it's, this is annual, you know, it's, it's 2,000 also. It's very, very, I mean, uh, uh, 
the region, you know, has abundance rain as compared to the other part of uh, Ethiopia. The reason might be, the reason might be, according to my knowledge, maybe the, 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 the wind that is coming from the wind side, I mean, the windward side, the, the dam side in all the western part of Ethiopia, you know, is, is at the leeward side of the mountain. You can see that the mountain, this is 4,000, something like that, a very high mountainous area, you know, up until this Eritrea, you can see, it is, it's called Semen Mountains. You know, the wind that's coming from the eastern side of the mountain will be lifted up and be condensed, and then at the leeward side, it will fall, it will fall as a rain, you know. That's why I think uh, there is a lot of rain in the western part of uh, Ethiopia. It's, a, it's, it's green, it's the greenest part of Ethiopia. All the western part of Ethiopia, actually, and some southern part of Ethiopia, like uh, Sidamo, Southern nations, Albani, and so on, are, all those areas are very um, green areas. Okay, this is the important uh, part of the dam. This is the important part of the dam. And, uh, yeah, that's all. This is the 3D version of the dam. You can see the uh, fetch length of the, the reservoir that it extends very, very long, uh, it covers a very long area, you know. It's very, even if, if you travel on a car 246 kilometers, it, it takes you maybe four hours. You know, if, if you, if you travel 60 kilometers per hour, Okay, okay, travel 100, maybe 100. You can, you can travel, um, your, I mean, as a speed 100 kilometers per, per hour, then two hours. It will take you two. It's very long. Long reserve. And this construction actually caused uh, a dispute between the riparian countries. Ethiopia, Sudan, is, and uh, Egypt. Actually, Sudan has another dam below. This is called the Rosary Dam. Uh, and another dam also inside, I think. But I know, I'm sure that the, the Rosary Dam, and Egypt has also has one dam. I don't know why. Uh, it's unfair, I mean, to complain when the Ethiopian side build the dam. That's, that's not she. Um, because there is a dam below. Why should the Sudanese do have that dam and why not Ethiopia? And that is not, um, logical. Not legitimate, you know. It says discussing about the use of water is something different. But, Opposing the construction of the dam over the Nile, this is not justice. It's not justice. Anyway, there is a dispute. I mean, I'm not concerned about these things now. I just, um, I just want to see the technical aspect of it, the hydrological aspect of it. But for me, sometimes I question and it doesn't feel good. I mean. And now in the, this is the reservoir and this is the dam, not the current state of the dam actually. It's the current state of the dam is much better than this one. It's almost finished. This one is there. I just put this image simply to show the reservoir, the closer the reservoir. That's all. Same, the reservoir and the dam is, is a little bit different than the previous one. Previous image now, it's almost finishing. 
Uh, so this um, the next part that, that is this and I'm going to discuss how we can calculate the reserve uh, volume and the reserve uh, surface area and um, that's all it's already known actually it's not just to <laughs> to to find out but just simply to calculate I mean use the methodology, the measurement, the skill, the technology of ArcGIS to simply to calculate and see for myself. So how do we measure first from experience the reserve volume? How do we before ArcGIS for example? Before ArcGIS I used to, I used to build a dam and I used to uh, do the reserve air, you know, Estimate the reserve area of the dam, surface area, and so on. Before. So at that time, maybe 20 years ago, more than that, I used to I use a planimeter, a small tool, an instrument to measure the area of something. For example, on a map, you just simply uh, use that planimeter and measure the areas. So I, I used to use that thing. Uh, to find out the catchment area, the reserve area. I, I, I used to do a lot in surveying, surveying measures using surveying some telolites, total station. I had a total station. I used total station to measure the, to, to do contour and so on and so on. Sometimes if it's not necessary, I just simply take some pointers and estimate the reserve area. Just simply. It's not actually much necessary if as long as you you know that there is water coming you do I mean if you have uh, see you your problem is much greater than the I mean you need the desperately water if you want to build that dam and you know that there will be a reserve if not sometimes it happens you know. The planning method, you know, gives you some number. You call, you just multiply it by some the scale of a map or something. It gives you an exact area of the surface area of anything you want to like, you want to find out. Then uh, this is the, the instrument planning method. You just simply trace. It gives you some number, and you multiply that number with your scale and you find exactly the area it's perfect uh, i found out that it is invented here in Switzerland by a person called Einstein in the 18th something century in the 19 at the end of 19th century and it is wonderful i like that instrument you see <laughs> very much it is a problem solver <laughs> sol solver See, whenever you want to know the area and you know, something like that. So, that's it. That is the, the planning method, you know. This is all. Then, you can use a mathematical formula like a conic formula and so on to, to find out, to calculate the volume of the reservoir. That was the old technology. Now they have changed the, this planning method into a, a digital plan. I found out that, and it is very interesting actually. But now there are also other technologies, you know, drone technology. You can survey your area with a drone. Zzz. As long as you want some information, drone technology. But the drone technology is expensive. I think it's forty thousand something is in Switzerland, and. Uh, Dollar, and also there is another one, the ArcGIS satellite technology. If you have a digital elevation model, you, if you can find that easily, then um, that's all you can do. Uh, so ArcGIS with ArcGIS, all the analysis you want. 
you can do contour, you can calculate the area, you can calculate the volume. Everything you like to do in the reserve. And then um, find out the storage capacity. Um, Carve, then that's what, that's what you need for your hydrological analysis. It's very important. Very important. So that is it. And this is me while doing, you know, surveying. It's just simply a level. It's very, very But most of the time I use satellite and uh, total station at that time. So that's it. Um, now I'm going to show you some steps, you know, how to do that. Uh, I mean, give you some hint, hint how to. You see, the point is, is not the Archaea structure. See, the point is how to see the hydrograph and so on, the hydrology part of the, the problem. So that's it. But I will show you how, how to do it in in ArcGIS. These are the steps how I did it, for example. I first downloaded them digital division model of the reserve area and I created a contour map from the digital division model. Then create a polygon from the contour. Calculate area from the polygon. And clip the dam with that polygon, you know, and convert each each cell of that value of the dam into integers, so that I can be able to do some mathematical operations, uh, as it gives me some table, you know, value table of values. Then I can calculate using ArcGIS um, this, this, this field calculator and so on, statistics. Then use raster calculators to calculate the depths of each pixel from the from the top level that I wanted to be. I mean the the crust level, the normal level of the reservoir, maybe from a, a, anywhere you want to calculate the depths, you can do that from any level up or down. You can. Do very easily with RPGs. And then calculate the volume with a field calculator. Or there is another plugin which calculates everything for you without doing all these processes. There is integer or without that you just simply click a storage capacity plugin. That will give you, that will do the job. Gives you area and volume and so on, so on. So that is it, but that is the, the, the elevation. I just take from 640, that is a normal level. Just the crust, the brim, the brim of the, the spillway at the middle of the dam. So I just pick that uh, contour level and make from this one, you know, a polygon and so on. I just simply create a polyline to join the, uh, this is a part of the dam. And then just, then form a polygon and do the rest of the calculations. So this is the polygon I finally, I finally got. So that's all. I will show you how I did it. Maybe, let me, let me do it here how I did it in ArcGIS. Ah, okay, yes, yes.
Oh, this is the actually the the polygon, the polygon that I made. First, you need a, a digital elevation model that you see. From this digital elevation model, you are going to develop a contour. This is a contour, and the contour, you know, the the level of I mean the level of the contour. So you can pick the the one which you want. For example, six hundred forty. I just pick this contour. Pick the pick the and form another layer from that then that layer is this this is a layer you just pick that one and then form a polyline a polyline this is the dab the downside is this exactly here so i just connect this with the line and join them join the line the two and form a polygon then automatically the ArcGIS will form for you a polygon and that polygon is this one you know I just connect this to and form a polygon so that is it that is it um, then it's, it's easy to calculate the area of the polygon simply you can you can go here you see this is 1894 calculated Simply here you can you can use this calculate geometry. It will calculate for you. Just calculate geometry area. This is square kilometer. Hidden. It will do that for you. It will fill for you. That's all. Then the other is you need to. For example, my calculation. You need to <coughs> this. Uh, digital division model must be clipped by this one. You just clip. You just simply clip this. Yeah, this is, this one is a clipped um, GIS. See the digital division model. Then after that, you just change it into integer. So the value of all the cells. You have to convert it into integer. And so there are steps. You just simply go there, and you can get it everywhere. It is available. The, the methodology how to do it. So here's the integer um, cell value converted into integer. Then I just simply calculate from this now the depth, the depth of the you see, you know, the depth of the pixels. You know, the pixels are size. It's a square size, for example, in my case, this is 12.5 by 12.5. And they have a certain depth, the value, the elevation value of the, the, <coughs> the pixel is there. So you have, you, you know, your own level above mean sea level, 640, and you subtract that from that the elevation that elevation of each pixels actually the the uh, ArcGIS what it will do for you is that it will count similar elevation values wherever they might be located the elevation is similar it will count them collect them for you similar elevation you know the the pixel area is oh, it's the same so you know now similar relation collected in in, in counted in one so you, it will tell you thousand of these elevations is something like that then if you know the count if you know the elevation if you know uh, the area then you can calculate just simply multiply them you can calculate the volume the volume of Everything here is under the 646 and it will tell you the, the volume of each pixel and when you sum all those volumes you will get the total volume of the, the water. That's all. So if 
just if you are interested i can show you the table you see it will count it, it will give you value and the count of it then you just simply go go here from this this field and calculate you just simply go value you have the value you have the count you see uh have the count and you know the area of the the two the 12.5 times 0.5 you know 12 12.5 by 12.5 this is just simply you, know, you, you just calculate the area the the volume of each similar you see collected similar pixels then finally it will give you this you now you can you can do some statistics exactly it gives you the sum is 72 9 this is a volume you know 72.9 billion meter cube of water that is how they know the, the volume of the the dam it's very easy you know they 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 said that it is 74. Maybe there might be a little difference in consideration of the deviation. They might have considered just some flow over the uh, top of the uh, the spillway at the middle of the river, maybe 50 centimeters, or maybe if, the, if if just if you consider that, because if there is a flow, there is a height, you know, a head, maybe 50, 20. Or one, up to one meter, a normal time. The, that creates an elevation that, or oh, the volume over the, the reservoir. So, all that the water finds its level, you know, at just the level at the, the dam, you will find it there at the, at the tip. It's similar, it's the same level. So, you will find millions or billions of meter cube of water for, 50 centimeter increase on, on, on the on the sphere crust you know so that might be but we are perfect and so i accept this calculation it's, it's the same it doesn't matter it doesn't matter 73 they calculated 74 they said i found out it's 73 it's good it's good so that's it so um, coming to the hydrology calculation that is how you calculate the area and the volume and this is the result i found out i forgot to tell you the 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 plugging oh i forgot to tell you the plugging okay let me show you the plugging that i also calculated the this thing you know you can go there to the plugging is in in a tool menu, this is an is a tool menu or something like that. You go to there and you will find a plugin, a storage capacity plugin, you know, it's special analysis, you see, storage capacity. You click this one, you put all the elevation, the file you need, the request that it is uh, bringing to you, then you just simply pull fill those things and calculate. In my case, I can show you the calculation I did. This is a calculation I did, for example, using that plugin, you know. You can see this, this is a calculation. Just, it calculates for me at the depth of 10 meters because I just, I ordered it. <laughs> 10 meters and 10 meter steps. It does this for me and it's far. This is the area, 1823 kilometers square. It, it's a bit different. In my case, it is 1895. In this one, it is 1823. In the official narrative, it is 1874. No difference. It's okay. It's a minor, it's a minor click will change everything. That's what, it's a consideration actually. So we are all in the same plane, we are all okay. So the, the volume is perfect, you know. It's 73, the, my calculation also 73. Uh, and practically, 
I just consider that my calculation is correct because it is mechanical, you know, it's clearly, you see how you calculate it, there is no error there, you know, even if it's just similar as, as such, you are doing some, measuring some table, you know, the, the length of a table, and it's, it's just similar like that, it's perfect, no error at all. So, that is, that's how, this is how now. It's very important for me for analyzing the hydrology of the dam. The reservoir routing, calculate the hydro, the outflow go off. So this is it. This is it. Um, um, now to the hydrology, no? This, uh, this we have done the archaeologies, measuring everything, you know, and we have got the results. Now we have got it. See, this is the result, you can see, this is the result, and the result is okay, we have got it, we are perfect. <laughs> this is the technical part of the dam, you can see the technical part of the dam, the saddle dam, that is 5 kilometers, this is 5.2 kilometers, they say it, elevation 50 meters. As for the information I found. And this is an emergency speedway. Whenever the flood overtops, it's beginning to overtop the dam, you know. Uh, actually, you know, the dam has, Unco, uh, it has 15 meter, you know, free boat, 15 meter. So two meter means there are, I mean, again, 40 meter, for 40, 40, extra, 40 extra, therefore, mm, this is just a spillway, when the water level reaches 2 meter above 2 meter, it starts to flow over the saddle dam, because the saddle dam is spread in 5 kilometer, the water will spread, you know, all over over the the saddle dam then they have a collector below you can see on google it will collect all and direct direct the water into into a, a canal you know and lead that into to the downstream side of the river that is the the, the dam has three spillways the other spillway is is a gated spillway it has six gates and that is at lower level, 625, 624.9, they say, but 625 is safe to say. So, that is a spillway. Whenever they just, you know, remove reservoir water or something like that, release water, because of the incoming, you know, might be, easy. Uh, a flood, flood might come from the upstream side. You need to release some of the water and to receive the other one, you know, the incoming flood. That might be the use of this spillway, I think so. But whatever that is there to release the water. To help the dam, you know, to be safe always. So that is very good. And um, this is a dumb technical information that I found from internet. This is a sketch, you know, the cross-sectional sketch. It doesn't tell everything, but it just simply show the elevation of the the pen stock, the minimum operating level. Um, the gated spillway level, you know, this is just actually not on the dam, the gated spillway is just simply indicating the level. The spillway is away from the dam, in the middle of the side and the, the main dam. So it's just simply to indicate the level. So the food supply level of the dam is 640, where I calculated. And if 
water has to flow over the spillway then there should be 641, 640.5.20.10 something like that uh, so that the, the water f flows over but they consider that this is a top full supply level and I, we calculated all the volume from that level you know? and if you add 50 centimeters it could change maybe it will go up to 74 or something like that as per the, the similar that as they have done it so the minimum operation level is 509 what does it mean? it means the turbines are not going to operate or start operating unless otherwise the water level reach into this level 590 especially there are 16 turbines and pen stocks uh, and two of them are below at 542 level and the others at 560 there is a 30 meter difference i think so almost 18 meters a 20 the lower uh, pen stocks are two and they can operate you know while feeding the dam and so on and so on and they also help to because you can't stop the flow of the dam you just simply release it instead of just simply release you use it with these two turbines release it you see the others those those uh, minimum operating level of those two uh, turbines it is 560 the other the other Penny stocks needs to have a minimum operating level of 590. So that is it. That is information, technical information. We need this because this information. Uh, later, while we are calculating, doing hydrofill routing, uh, uh, we must have those information to calculate everything. That is it. This is a dam. This is, this is a drawing, I think. 3D drawing. You can see all the pen stocks, the turbines. And you can see two of them are below, you know. Although it's not clearly, I mean, visible. The difference is not as such. It is very little. It is almost 28 meters. Difference between the two. You can see this is a picture. It's clearly these are the two pen stocks and the diameter of the the pen stocks is eight meter all of the pen stocks 60 of them has have uh, have uh, 80 meter diameter so it's very important to have this information to do an orifice uh, hydraulic hydraulic calculations so you can see this is this is the result obtained and you, you see the information of, you know, of the area it's, it's all the same as they found out so we are good to go and this is the the pen stock um just to see it, i mean to view it as it is it's just eight meters in diameter this is a part in the piece one piece and the length of the pen stock is more than 100 or 118 i think it's not important for me but it's very long one pen stock this is just a part a part just joins to to make the hole it should be joined you know to make the hole that's all okay now the hydrological analysis uh, of the reserve what do we need to to do reserve routing on the on the dam? We need to have elevation storage capacity cap. How much water can be stored in this in a certain elevation? We have to know how that, and we need a curve graph 
you need to form it in or let them elevation and storage then we need elevation and discharge capacity curve it means whenever we have this elevation we can release this amount of water into the downstream that means it's a competence the capacity to discharge for example I considered here only the pen stocks, the water that goes through the turbine, not, not any uh, little bit water over the central um, spillway. But most of the water goes through, through the turbine, not the diversion structures which is found below the dam, not the spillway, not any other spillways, but just simply the pen stock. So, the capacity of the pens to release water to the downstream tank. That is it, that's what I have done here. Then we develop from this a storage indication curve. Now we know it shows us this is the storage and it's called storage indication curve. Then from that we can calculate the outflow hydrograph using the information from the inflow, real inflow data, we need that. Then if we have this real, real flow data, now we know the storage indication curve. You see, now we can calculate the outflow. You see. That's it. We are going to see that in the, in the following um, calculations. You can see now, one thing I did was, you know, uh, I took simply the area and the elevation of the, the dam that I calculated for using ArcGIS. And I, I, I used the conic formula if, I mean, to, to check that if it can give me, I mean, the right volume. Because we used to do that, you know. Is that just simply a calculation or is it a perfect, it's a very, usable calculation. It is a very usable and perfect the conic formula. You see, this is the volume I calculated using the conic formula, given the area is taken just from that um, ArcGIS result. Then I calculated the volume using this area and elevation. It, I found out this is, you know, 64, 72 millimeter cube. It's, it's right there, right there, it's almost there, you know, no problem, we are perfect, it's good to, to do the hydrograph calculation with this, no problem, we can take that data, the previous data, but we can also use this one, no problem, just to see the effect of the outflow, I mean, the, the shape of the that type of the hydrograph means. That's it. This is the area elevation curve. You know, the 1823 is 1823 km square is the area. So this is the information we need. Storage capacity curve. I mean, the area elevation curve, this one, this, this is, I mean, if you see HEC HMS, you, they use that one, air elevation curve to calculate, to do an hydrologic analysis. So it's very important to have it as well. This, this is this is a tape meter means for the two turbines in the beginning. It, it means the minimum operating level is 560 for the lower penny stocks. Uh, 460. And the elevation of the penny stock is 542 at the center of the, the penny stock actually, which that's considered to be. Then that is the difference is 18 meters because that is the minimum full level to commence just working. If that is above, that's good. Above 560. But it is, if it is above 500, below 560, we are not going to start 
Und Paris, sie, sie zu arbeiten, das war. So there is a limit, a minimum, a minimum operating level. For the other 14 turbines, the minimum operating level is 590. 590 meter full level required to operate, to commence the other 14 turbines or 14 electric generating machines, you know. So that's how I calculated this thing, you know, considered the calculation in my calculation. Then there are 14, you multiply that by 14, you know. And the other is 2, they multiply by 2, and you will find all the discharges through the pen stop. That is the, the ability to do the competence, the discharge that if the water is available, the pen stock can discharge this, this thing, this amount of water per second. That's it. So, because I considered the top level 640 per minute level, then the wheel has no problem. To, to see on the wheel, you need to have one meter or some some kind of you know dibs over over the the top of the the spillway broadcast the spillway I think so I just consider add one meter and calculated you can see that there is a potential when it is one meter you can discharge to 194 meter cube of water per second. That is it. So the calculation is very easy. You know, a water formula. You have the coefficient. The coefficient is 1.44, I think. Length is of the wheel is 205, 205 meter. Then the height is, you consider one meter here, then you can calculate the discharge easily. And the orifice question is given by the orifice formula. It's very known in hydraulics, you know. Then there is a coefficient. The coefficient is is just helpful to to consider the loss because of the friction or everything. You know there is a loss that will help to compensate that. I think head loss. There is a head loss. That is it. So. C, the coefficient that is C, C is 0 0.6. Area is area of the circle, pi times D is a power of 2 of 4, pi is 3.14. Very simple. And then 2 times G is acceleration to, to gravity, 9.81. And H is all those variables. H is a variable here. So we use this equation and calculate all the all the discharge the discharge capacity of the river. That's what that is the discharge capacity and this is the graph. The graph you see is not as smooth as you see in other discharge capacity curves. When the, you know, when the elevation increases, uh, you know, the discharge also increases. It's not like that because there is a limit here. There is a, a minimum operating level. You have to consider that. So when you consider that, then, you know, it, 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 it will be like this. The graph shows this. So that's it. This is the elevation. Now we have two process informations. We've got the discharge, the competence of the pen stocks to discharge. We know it, how much we are going to release using those pen stocks. And then we know our volume of water. And then we can develop now the storage indication curve. We have it. Storage indication curve. Always, you see, it's 
it is an indicator. The, if you have this much water, this much of water be released, and something like that, it indicates you. So, these are the information we require to calculate the uh, to calculate the 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 outflow hydrograph, the real hydrof outflow hydrograph. Whenever anything comes in, the inflow hydrograph enters into the reservoir, then there is something that is going out. Now because we know all the information, how it is going to be discharged and so on, you know, all the information, now we can trace the outflow hydrograph, we can do it, route it. That's it. So that's that's this is a storage indication cup. You know, cumulative storage we know, elevation we know, discharge car capacity we know. Then we can calculate the storage indication cup. You know, if you if you if you want to know to to know how to route a flood, I mean a reservoir. And, and see the outflow hydrograph, generate the outflow hydrograph, then you have to see my other video that I did have the steps, how I have done all those routing steps, how you can do it. You, you, you can see it clearly there, the steps. And you can do it by yourself there. So now the, the last information we need is the data, hydrology data, inflow data. That inflow data I found it from a journal. It's data, it's a record. This record uh, been done before, you know, because there is a a dam at the downstream side of the, the current guard, you know, dam. And they used to measure that, the inflow hydrograph. They have the inflow hydrograph, the rosary down, I think, uh, as per the information I found from the journal. So this is the <coughs> inflow that they got from the recorded data. And actually, they, they just do this, they took the, the, the information from I mean, the recorded uh, hydrograph or hydrology, inflow hydro data to, you know, to forecast the future. I mean, the future flow of the river using some, I mean, sequence or average sequence or just something like that. Is, but for me, it's not important all those things. They just, it's, 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 because they did the journal in 2014 and they know the, the 2020, 2029, you know, data. It means they just simply focus from the real data they've got in the 1973 or something, 19, up to 1978. So, I don't need all those things. These five years minimum of the 1979 indicate for me that that is the natural flow of the water. This is five year average minimum. So that is realistic. Five years minimum average is realistic. That is the flow of the river. So we can use this hydrograph and do, analyze, see the effect actually. It's just simply the storage and how many years can the water can be stored in this in the dam and also something like that. What will be the outflow if this amount of water gets in? That's all. That is the the use of this um, 
recorded data. So I just process the data and turn it into a meter cube per second. This that will help me for my calculation. It will see in months in two seconds, that's all. So that is in seconds you will get this uh values. Now this is the calculation. This is a final calculation. You know, I have the inflow, then this one is the outflow, the violet is the outflow. Actually, the flow that is coming and before, before the film began, at the very beginning time, when, that is the scenario, you know, when the flow gets in, and I assume that the turbines are not working, you know, because the level is not reached yet, so it's zero, the flow is zero. As the real, I mean, the real analysis, that is zero. Then, after the water reached to a point, then the turbines, the penstock at a lower level, the penstock at the lower level, you know, are going to start. Because the limit of that 560 is achieved. That's why they start to release the water through the turbine, generating some electricity. That is it. That's how this outflow hydrograph is generated. And still, in one year flow, the maximum Water arrived is at five eight is six zero. You see, at this five eight six zero, the the pen stocks has the competence, the power, the ability to release seven thousand three hundred forty two meter cube per second at this level. I mean, it has more, but more than the inflow hydrograph more than the incoming inflow, you know, the inflow maximum is 7,000 in the month of August. You see in Ethiopia it's July, in August, in September, high rainfall, you see, much water is coming in those seasons. Then even above the, the, the inflow, the, the rate, you know, the rate, the incoming rate of the inflow, the discharge is more than the inflow. It means as long as you have accumulated some water, you know, during these seasons, no, no flow discharge, some water stored, then you have much water, then you release it faster than the, in, the incoming. Just simply to use the turbines, that's all. But you can adjust this thing if you, if you know that you see the, the incoming hydrograph, I mean the incoming flow is this one, you know, you just close, you just close some of the turbines and reduce the rates because you have to balance them. So that is it. There is some consideration here, but this is the calculation of the hydrograph. But in realistic, realistically, you know, you can't, you can't consider it zero. It's not allowed by the law, you know, you can't stop the water completely. You have to release it back into the river. 20% of, I think I have studied this in the, in the school. If it is still, that is correct. 20% must be released without, whether you do a dam or whatever, the downstream user has the right to use the water. It's a law international law. You can't simply block it. You can't say this is mine. So that is it. That is 20% released inflow. I mean, if you consider the 20% of the inflow here, you will find this one. Luckily, this is a very small amount of water, except at uh, the time of August, you know, 1,400 something. 
So that is it. That is the that is the inflow hydrograph. That's a very small amount, you know. Anyway, the calculation according to the hydrological calculation, the result is this. Let us see what are the consequences of all these things and how we can interpret this these results. So this is the hydrograph that we got from these results. For example, this is the inflow hydrograph, the yellow. You know, because we have locked it, I mean, no flow, no, no, the pen stocks are not working and all the diversions are closed. Then no outflow. But in reality, no, actually. There's a little bit of flow by, you see, if you consider 20% of this. Um, but, uh, beginning the month of June, the flow increases because there is also a stored water the flow increases you know when the flow increases the volume also increases it fills the dam you know after a certain uh, situation then uh, in the month of for example june the turbine starts in the month of june you know this is the time when the turbines start to those two turbines then you know increase working and the outflow also increased because there is some water stores because you have stored water you can read it as much as you want you know if you you know the rate might be faster or lower you can close and you can decrease adjust you know the outflow hydrograph for example, the peak is here, I mean, the, the highest amount that they release is 7342 at this time through the pencil. Then you can lock one of the pencils, then it will decrease. It will come down here, if you want. But if you want to use the water, all the water, you can release as much as you want. You have the capacity, the competence to release. So this is the the hydrograph because two of the turbines were working full time that is it so now the volume can we have some water stored in the reserve enough water no water that came goes out and certain water might be stored in a year so we can calculate the volume of the water that came in with this for example if we, we are able to calculate the area the area of this we take this half for example this is a, a triangle half triangle half triangle means you have the base and the height, you can multiply base times height times half. That is the area. Then you know that the height is in meter cube per second, 7003 meter cube per second. And here you see, you can, there are two months, two months time here. Yeah. The month is two months, turn it into seconds. It means two months times 30 days average takes 30 times per day 24 times 60 per hour per hour 24 per minute 60 then two second multiply by 60 you will find in seconds then multiply them second by second what you will find is the volume of water that is going to be or that is solved in the, in the dam total area it means plus with this with the other half also that is the volume in a year in one year the volume then the outflow similarly the volume how much water released you can calculate and also in the 20 percent of flow how much volume i will show you i have tried to to see 
uh, how many years can take to fill the dam and so on. So I will I will show you that. I mean, let me show let me show you this. I mean, in Excel that I try to use. You see, here is the Excel. Actually, this is, this is the Excel calculation I did on the Excel in Excel. Here is the inflowing of flow hydrograph. For example, the amount of water that is going to fill the dam is this one. 74 billion meter cube of water then if you consider this one this is a triangle half triangle and calculate the area of that triangle the volume you know let's see this 7003 times 2 the month times and change it into second then because it is a triangle it's half multiplied by half this is it and the other part of the, 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 the hydrograph, you know, this is almost four months. And that is, you know, four months times this is, the sum of the two, the whole is, this is the hydrograph, the, the volume of water that can be collected uh, in one year. 64 million meter cube. Does this fill the, the da? Even without releasing it, it can't fill the dam. In one year, no. But we have to release, you know. We have to release. So by releasing this amount of, for example, let us assume we release always 20% of the water to the downstream. And we collect it, maybe. Let us collect it. Until we fill the dam. This is after the dam completed, we start, you know, operating now. We just release through the diversion structures some 20% of the water. And um, let us see, we have to reduce this volume from this volume, you know. So the volume we get, this one, this is the volume of this thing. Then the difference is 47 billion meter cube of water for one year and that is still not sufficient you know then uh, if we continue like this in how many years we can fill the dam then if you continue like this releasing 20 percent only 20 percent and uh, storing the water if you continue like that we only need 1.5 years, take consider 2 years. It needs you 2 years just closing the dam, raising 20% of it, filling the dam. It will take you 2 years as per this calculation, if I am right, you know. Then, but they have two turbines you know why don't they generate water in uh, in electricity with those two turbines and release the water to the downstream side now it is more than 20 percent so it doesn't affect the downstream user you know more than more than the, even even uh, it's equal to the incoming inflow just by releasing through the pen two pen stock stocks and generating electricity that is a outflow hydrograph let us calculate the outflow hydrograph volume of the outflow hydrograph how much water it is while we are working on the pen stock two pen stocks and that is this is a the hydrograph you know this hydrograph, I mean, this is the volume, I mean, you see, 7342, you know, times three months is first three months, you know, the, this is the rising limbies, you know, like this one, this one, let us assume this is a half triangle, then you calculate the volume of this thing, this amount of water released, volume, volume of water released. And the second half, you know, just consider this one. This is a rough estimation of volume, you know. So this 
is 734 and multiplied with So this is one in a one month. Okay, I just consider this one. This, this is one month. Okay, consider one month. It's okay. Okay, and one month is outflows and the sum of the outflow volume is 30 billion water. 30 billion cubic meter of water. Resist. Now consider that. Now what is the the remaining water. The remaining water is 60 billion, I think. Now we have got 60 because we release this one. We have got 60 billion mm, meter cube of water. The storage that is stored in the dam now. So now, how many years we need to fill the dam with this? situation if you continue doing the same then divided this one the total volume of the reservoir by this one the the remaining then you need to 4.5 years assume that it is five years in five years while the the dam is working only with the, the lower stocks, you know, we are talking about the lower stocks, the penny stocks, the oil, the oil turbines is, is going to fill the dam in five years. If you continue to, you know, to use the, the higher dams, I mean the higher uh, elevation penny stocks, then it's very difficult to, to fill it even in five years. It will take more, 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 more years while using the, the other pencil. But in five years, you can use the two turbines and fill the dam. Then you can use the other 14 pen stocks regulating the water and uh, maybe you know you just check how much water you have how much water is coming you calculate and how much of the water you are going to use to generate electricity and it should be continuous you know you can't simply stop it today and open it tomorrow as Factories are working, you know, they will lose. See, they will be bankrupt if you just simply close your electricity and we don't have water. Mm -hmm. No, you can't do that. So you have to measure, see the amount of water you have. And um, you see, analyzing how much of the generators can operate now and for how long. Uh, all this calculation must be um, taught, you know, before. You need to think all those things, you know. You need to think all those things beforehand and before you commence operation giving service to the client as electricity. So that is it. That is how you uh, that is that is the conclusion the final uh, leg of <laughs> my discussion. Uh, uh, the result what what does the result show? The result shows that the reservoir needs years of feeding to generate full potential, you know. And also, the other is the inflow and outflow. The outflow might be reduced to fill the dam at the very beginning, the outflow. If, you know, if they just simply wanted to minimize, just save water and release some to the downstream side, and at that time, at, while the dam is feeding, it might cause might cause 
the downstream users, you know, some problems. Huh? But as soon as the dam fills, completely fills, full, I mean it's full, then it's continuing working, just regular, then that's very good for the downstream users because they only get a certain amount of water. They don't get a fluctuated amount of water. For example, sometimes dry in a season, for example, in the in, 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 in for six months the flow is low. Then in that low season, because the guard dam has already stored water, it's not going to reduce the water much. You know, it's always a regular uh, regulated flow. So the downstream sites still they get water, normal water as usual. Even because of the dry season, because the flow decreases, the downstream side will get the same regulated water. Full amount of water, you know, because the dam. Because of that is the advantage of the dam for the downstream side. For the Egyptians, for the Indians, this is a benefit for them. I don't know why they, they argue. Why the dam was something, something, but the dam is very, very good for regulating the flow. There is a dry season, Egyptians certainly get regular flow as they get always, I mean, uh, last month they got some amount of water because Abai river has dried now, flow is low, no problem, they will get it, the store is for them, <laughs> you see, as long as the turbines are working normally, the flow doesn't affect, the, the downstream is also a beneficial still. No one can stop the water as long as it is flowing, it is coming. It will flood over the dam. You know? It's impossible to blow for water for long. You just just detain it for a certain time and release it. That's all. So the downstream people, the downstream residents should participate even in the economy of the dam, they have to give some money as well. Just because Ethiopia is building the dam for them so that the water is going to be regulated. If you see it positively, that is it. If Ethiopia uh, wanted to block the water, the river up by, they can't block it for long. It's impossible. It will overtop. So, this is, this is, this is the logic. The, the one who are complaining is, is just nonsense. That's politics, actually. I don't know, I mean, how they think, but if you see this in, 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 in just, Logically, it's an advantage for the downstream, even for the dam that exists at the, at the downstream side of the guard dam is the Rosary Dam, it's a Sudanese dam. That dam will get a pure water because most of the silt load will be you know, settled in the guard reservoir and the, the, the water flowing to the downstream side of the the uh, the guard is sediment free. Why do the people, you know, make uh, you know forestation, you know, even erosion protections, all those things? Why do they uh, just simply to protect, to give life for the dam, you know, to minimize the siltation problem? Now that dam, the downstream side of the dam has no more, I mean, silted, laden water. So the lifespan of 
it will increase you see here to mention that you see you know there will be always equilibrium in a water that doesn't have uh, sufficient uh, um, silt I mean when I have studied this in, in school that it will erode more more erosion capacity of the water that doesn't have any water it's just equilibrium no things are must be equilibri equilibrated and it will erode more more because you know there is a saying that a silt lad a silt laden water doesn't erode more as the downstream but a pure water it will erode yeah you have to see the science you know it's, it has its own explanation and so on but know that the downstream side of the dam will get a silt free water so that help the dam to continue serving for many many longer years and the other is a flood any incoming flood devastating incoming flood can be you know retarded detained in the gut and still will be released in a regulated manner to the downstream so still down it's a benefit for the downstream users you know that is it and the other advantage of the dam is the electricity if they are going to generate 6,000 megawatts of water, I mean electricity, then it will be beneficial for for other for those who want us to use. They can pay for the service and get the electricity, get the energy. You need more energy to more development activities. And that is it. You can pay and get it. That's one thing. And the other is from the Ethiopian side, from the owner side it means they can use reservoir for tourism, recreation, fishing, you name it, anything that you can use for, use with the, any reservoir that you can practice with. It people can relax out. maybe you know those areas will develop actually cities will will manifest now within short years uh, the area will be very very attractive area touristic it will be and also fishing people can eat you know fishes easily they can fish enjoy food you know. then after a long time of you know usage you know the the amount of water you know now you know the in and out of the reserve so if you have some extra water that can that can be used instead of just, just simply releasing releasing water for feeding a flood or and so on and so on now you because you know everything you can adjust yourself in use so that that extra water also can be used for irrigation in ethiopia around that area for farmers and so on and help themselves you know that is what i think that is my opinion and i think what i suggest is i mean actually it's not a, they, they may have that already there should be a well structure i mean a well structure around 4000 kilometers away from the dam one or two well structures you know 300 kilometers away 500 kilometers away that will tell you know automatically that measures the incoming flood and you know that that flood will arrive in a certain period to the 
to the reservoir dam. And if the reserve is full enough, it can't accommodate the water, the incoming water, and it might cause flooding and so on, then you have to release some water to the spillway, that lower spillway, and, and, um, you know, prepare the place, the space for the incoming flood. So the incoming flood will come safely and enjoy, you know, instead of being destructive and so on. That is it. That's how you, you should have, um, you know, a lot of skilled uh, hydrologists, lots of people who do have the knowledge how to manage all this. This is a big industry, you know. This is, this is not an, a, a, an easy dam. It needs many, many people who are working for. So that, the, you know, the purpose, the goal will be achieved. You know, it will be effective. If, if everything, uh, um, done in a manner, in a scientific manner, in a regulated manner, in, in, based on knowledge and everything. So, that should be done, I think. So that is it. Now I have finished my discussion. You know, thank you very much for your listening. Thank you very much. And uh, I will going to continue to do some hydrological analysis using grass, saga, QGIS, E. Lewis. There are a lot of those hydrological uh, hydro analyzing softwares by GIS. Almost all of the hydrological analysis are now, uh, you know, be done by, be done by all those, this stuff. It, it makes even those very difficult calculations, um, statistics calculations and so on that the hydrologists do, this can be also now be done with, easily with those logistic softwares, you know. Back in the days, it was very difficult to even to measure the, the reservoir, um, the catchment watershed area as well. It's very difficult. It was very difficult. Now it is easy, you know. Hydrology is very important part of the dam. Every civil engineering structures need hydrological information. Unless otherwise it is very difficult to, you can't build a canal without having or knowing the hydrology. Otherwise, uh, it has no use to build anything, any structure. Even while you are building a, a house, you need to know the groundwater and so on. See, to, to make your decision. Um, every where hydrology is there. If you want to do um, water requirements, for example, for your irrigation field, you need to quantify your water. You have to understand the water budget. So hydrology is a very important part of life. I can see it's just like water. So that's why everywhere is hydrology now. Every GIS is soaking hydrology. If you go there and see, it just, it's very, very interesting. I mean, it, it simplifies everything. You can, you want to know the slope just in a click of a button, you will know the slope, length of the river, size of the river, calculate discharge, slope, all those parameters. They are all there. So that is it. That is the end of my presentation. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention. And see you later. Over.